consider it. Okay. I am not alone. The news stories would overcome the paid advertising. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, I'd have to give this up, wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, Al Franken got elected. Yeah. Al Franken had money. Al Franken had a 10 years of Saturday Night Live. I'm thinking about it. I keep, I keep thinking I should do this just to get it out of my system. But, but you know, what, he, what Al has, and, and I'm finishing his book right now, he had the pizzazz to go against a Democrat. I mean, and he went against the leadership in the Senate who said, no, we're not going to support you, we're, in, we're supporting an incumbent. And he said, I'm running anyway. And so, and he, he had courage to stand for what he believed in. And, and so, yeah, I stood for women's rights. The NRA always gives me an F. I'm an F. Right. And um, what else am I against? I was against the Ten Commandments. People kept sending me back. And, you know, I, I was over at the temple the other day, and I thought, oh, my God, there's the Ten Commandments. They put it out front. I didn't know that, but I just didn't think it should be at the Capitol. Right. But and our Ten Commandments are not the ones they wanted up there. They left yeah, the first yeah, one out. a little different, and it smelled right over there. <laughs> and, uh, um, they left off the first one about the Egypt. Come on. That was a big one to us. Well, I mean, but who's picky? It doesn't have Mike Ritt's name at the bottom. That's right. <laughs> and do you like the little, sh the little Star David at the bottom? Oh, yeah, you too. I do. Yeah, I mean, that I big cross. Don't but choose I think to. that, yeah, we need people who stand for what they do. Don't under, you know, people are so afraid of the NRA, but the door-to-door -door person has relatives in prison. They have someone in the family that needs a colonoscopy that doesn't have any insurance. Right. And they have, they're raising a grandkid someplace, and they're too old to be doing that. So you can find a commonality. So let me tell you, I, I was in Iceland this this past year, I was in May, okay, and and, and and sat and talked to this waiter who's just bitching about everything, politics and corruption, and all, everything that everybody bitches about. I say to him, "What about your health care?" This is what he says. Oh, I don't worry about that. Sure. I go. Do you realize that little thing you just did? <laughs> what Americans would do to be able to go? Oh, please, that's not the problem. <laughs> He goes, we pay for it. I go, well, what do you pay for? It? He goes, probably the taxes that come out of my check every month is <clears throat> probably 37%. That's a nice chunk. Anybody in this room not willing to pay another $200 a month for health care they don't have to think about? $250 a month so they can go to school, their kids can go to school? Right? That's all government. And you wouldn't have to take what comes out of your check for medical anyway if you have a job. I right. Mean, yeah. And again, that whole business about don't employers want out of this? What do they know about? Why should why are employers in the business of healthcare anyway? Again, that seems to me like it could be a pretty good sell. Because because the government said they couldn't raise wages. That's to, right. Uh, and so they said, okay, well we need good workers, we gotta pay them. We can't raise wages, so therefore we'll give them a benefit, it won't count. But that was 70 years ago. Can we, I didn't, can we didn't change that? That's a good idea. What I said was that's what happened. I don't know. It, it, it's frustrating because even when you catch them in a, not even a lie, but you catch them in, in a statement designed to do what they want it to do. I'll give you an example. While we're talking about what happened in Texas yesterday, after Sandy Hook, an old girlfriend of mine is on Facebook. And apparently, I don't know exactly what I, I do to women, but three or four women in my life now are, are, are like insane Republicans. Not just, they're out of their minds insane. And I, I feel responsible. So I'm not one of them. So this girl um, posts on Facebook, like a couple of days after Sandy Hook, that the father of a daughter who was killed at Sandy Hook was testifying in front of Congress not to do anything with gun control. He still was a firm believer in the Second Amendment. She posted this to say, you see, if he feels this way, then clearly Second Amendment rights are at the forefront and that's what people want. <coughs> in about 12 milliseconds of research, you find out this guy didn't have a daughter at Sandy Hook. He wasn't testifying in front of Congress. It was at a school board meeting in the next town. Right? And it was just some guy who knew the family of somebody whose daughter had been killed. And I usually stay away from other people's 
fights on Facebook because you really do nothing else with your life if you fight everybody. But I did write and said, Jenny, you have to take this down because it's clearly a lie. It's clearly manipulative. It's clearly incendiary. She writes back and says, well, yeah, but the message is really what's most important to me. But no, what was important to you was that the father of the dead daughter was important. That's when you go, okay, I'm supposed to find common ground now? Yeah. Find me the neo-Nazi who's really concerned about climate change. <laughs> and we'll find common ground. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any final questions? Questions. I have a final question. Yes. You can only run for office if your current 20-year younger girlfriend is a Democrat. Oh, she is. Okay. But she's, okay. she's not a lot of drugs, though. <laughs> she's manic depression. She's bipolar too, I'll have you know. She's very proud of it. I got some Xanax out of this. She goes, Xanax, please. Yeah. Bipolar too. Other questions? I took I spoke too long. Anyway. No, no, you didn't. No? You didn't. It was a good night. Well, I guess I just feel like do you really feel like you're wasting your time when you talk to someone who's not gonna be convincible? We call them persuadables. Those are the people that we feel like we should be talking to. And I just find that they seem to be fewer and fewer persuadable people. Um, let me just say, yes, it's a complete waste of time, but it still has to be done. Because, again, I think we have to go back to that. You are not getting the narrative. You're not taking the oxygen in this room. I will ruin dinner before you. we have one more moment of telling me how Obama was not born here. I don't care who invited me, who invited you. This discussion, we're not having. And there's a couple of discussions. We can. Now, again, we can't always talk about block grants to the states. You don't want to blow up dinner over that. But on, on some of these core issues, it is time uh, to stop worrying about her feelings. Anything else? Questions? Yes, Joe. Uh, one of the uh, things that, that has been bugging me lately is the uh, somewhat uh, different uh, that Democrats are making between liberals and progressives. Such as, I, I, somebody told me, this before, well, you're just a liberal. And I said, yeah, thinking that was the yeah. compliment. <laughs> well, you're not a progressive. And I'm going, what's the difference? They couldn't tell me what the difference is, but there's a lot of Democrats who are thinking that if you call yourself a progressive, you're somehow a step above those liberals. Is there a difference in your mind between a liberal and a progressive? Let, let me give you one more Nazi analogy, because I promise myself, I'm only going to give you two. Uh, there are Reformed Jews, Conservative Jews, Orthodox Jews, mm -hmm. Reconstruction Jews, Reconstructionist Jews. Uh, and it was a distinction that Jews made and make, but Hitler didn't make. The Republicans are not making the distinction at all. We should just stop. I mean, I think we should just go, you know what? In fact, you can say to people, anytime they throw around the word liberal, if we replace that with Jew or Baptist, do you understand how, how awful that is to hear? I, I think anytime someone says, you should throw something at them. There we go, you know what? This is not what we should be talking about. It's like the fight now with Donna Brazil, right? Yeah. Uh, Are you? <laughs> when she said if she, if she had her choice, she would, she, would, she would have replaced Clinton. You know what? If I had my choice, you would never run a national election. You make Bob Shrum look good, and he loses everything. But, yes, I would say there is, there is no distinction. It's just a little word game we like to play. It's a purity test, which is crazy. We're going to you're disagree welcome. on that. I'll cut you off for that one, so okay. you're welcome. Okay. Well, and I think, uh, first of all, not only we should give a very huge round of applause mm -hmm. for being here why Barry is not going to run for office. So, I'm very glad you're here and, and uh, so happy that you came tonight. Oh, you. Yeah, we just, uh, again, we need, we need more voices. We, and I, again, be sure and pick up his latest